So I'm talking of sustainability. How a child will be born in Gombe State will not only have five or the routine exam, uh, immunizations until he's old enough, but even his own younger ones that are coming up, how they will continue to access these services. In 2015, Nigeria lost about 2,300 under five-year-olds and 145 women of childbearing age, as stated by a UNICEF report. This makes the country the second largest contributor to the under five and maternal mortality rate in the world, despite the progress made over the past 16 years in reducing this. That time, one out of every six uh, children in Nigeria would li most likely die as a result of uh, any of those uh, common childhood uh, illnesses, particularly vaccine-preventable ones. And we realized that if we could tackle the issue of uh, uptake of immunization, if we could tackle the issue of uh, supply of health workers, if we could tackle the issue of uh, nutrition, then we would be able to make a difference. When I assumed office as Commissioner of Health in Gombe State, we had a few challenges. First and foremost, we had challenges in terms of human resources for health. Then we have challenges in terms of awareness on malnutrition. Thousands of these children under age five die mostly from preventable causes such as pneumonia, diarrhea, malaria, and malnutrition. The same report shows that 37% of children or six million children of this age are chronically malnourished with low weight for height and so are stunted. Uh, prior to the program or the project uh, by Save the Children, uh, one has no, uh, there is no much information within Gwambi regarding issues of uh, uh, nutrition and we have uh, different segments working independently without uh, uh, connecting to each other. Ever since the establishment of the State Committee for the Nutrition, uh, I think there was no year, yeah, particular financial year, that a substantial allocation was made to the Food and Nutrition Committee. Though routine immunization coverage has also increased, disparities exist along the geopolitical regions of the country. Full immunization is lowest in the northwest and northeast regions, with less than one-tenth of children having received all of the main vaccines, and highest in the southeast and southwest regions, and remains almost three times higher among urban children and among rural children. Before the intervention of Save the Children, we have 154 quality equipment that are not functional. But with their support, we went around with technician. The technician was able to correct uh, 46 equipment that has electrical uh, problems. Basket phone was introduced in 2009. So for the first uh, three years, which uh, Gabi, Global Alliance for Vaccine and uh, Immunization stopped sup uh, uh, supporting the state. The basket fund, you know, run in short of money, which quite okay. The amount we are getting in a month, it cannot cover our work plan. Underneath these statistics lies the pain of human tragedy for thousands of families. Even more devastating is the knowledge that if essential interventions reached women and babies on time, most of these deaths would have been averted. To address these poor health indices, Nigeria needs to redouble its efforts, put in place and implement new policies, review current strategies, and ensure effective and equitable allocation of resources. This will put Nigeria on track for achieving the Sustainable Development Goal, SDG, for maternal and child survival. In 2011, we got uh, a grant from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to help us uh, carry out advocacy, particularly on uh, immunization, 
nutrition, as well as human resources for health. The aim of this uh, grant was actually to correct those very uh, wrong indices that we had been uh, having with regards to maternal, newborn and child health in Nigeria. This advocacy initiative was supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, BMGF. It focused on, one, getting political and public commitment to end preventable child and maternal deaths. Two, increasing and sustaining health financing and health workforce. And three, promoting funding for nutrition activities and mitigating challenges around effective routine immunization coverage. The discussion about whether we, you know, we are going this way or another way has actually done in a very collaborative manner with all development partners that work in the state, um, other people as well on board, traditional institutions, religious leaders, and Save the Children actually well was, uh, was actually in the forefront, um, bringing people together, sitting at several committees in this agency and also at the Ministry of Health to see that uh, people sit down together to conceive the idea of aligning with the national system by the creation of the primary health care development agency. We've engaged strongly with some children on the issue of improving nutrition at the LGA level. In the course of improving nutrition at the LGA level, uh, the Ministry of Government has created a budget line for nutrition at LGA level for all the 14 local governments. We have been making efforts for so many years to see that uh, a budget line is created for nutrition. But unfortunately, uh, it, it could not scale through throughout those years. Until 2016, when we had uh, uh, 200 million naira. But with the effort of uh, several children pushing hard to see that uh, uh, things are done for nutrition, because I can recall, I collected the commitment of several children and the UNICEF in that very particular year, 2016. I presented it to the government then to see that at least something substantial is earmarked for state or as, as a state counterfunding. We were sensitized on how to go on advocacy. That is, we were shown the way to go to some other influential people, ask them for what we want in the facilities based on evidence. So the children told us that wherever or whatever we are doing, we should have concrete evidences. That is why in most cases we have to find out data from the facilities and to some extent pictures. We take pictures to present to our stakeholders. And before we go we have to identify reasonable issues that are concrete. Anybody who comes to any facility we talked about, you can see that there is problem on what we said. And we sit down also to find out who are the stakeholders that we should talk to. They have uh, trained, they have uh, empowered uh, development committees in two LGA, uh, Buji and uh, Kadauri. And uh, those uh, development committees, they are now very, very proactive in terms of one demand creation, strengthening of culture, and even the polter tracking. So I think. Uh, by and large, those uh, development committees, what the, the world development committees have done a lot in addressing most of the routine immunization challenges in those uh, two LG of Kadauri and Buji LGA. Uh, you can see from the way they have owned the program, so you know, they have owned the program, uh, thereby making them available for advocacy. Sensitization. With the family planning activities, now we use the word child birth spacing. And Save the Children have been supporting us, especially we had the support from them about the budget line. Initially, there was no budget line in Zamfara State, but now with the support of Save the Children, we have budget line in the state. And we also have the support for them from uh, the Save the Children and Clinton Health Access Initiative supported us on uh, strategic plans which now the family planning 
um, CPR is so high now from 1% to 5.7% in the state. In terms of policy making and other changes we've tried to introduce, Save the Children has taken us on a tour to understand that there is a need that the nation as a whole comes together to produce a common platform that everybody will have a level ground to play in terms of the health sector. So they were able to conduct an advocacy, we were able to look into the National Health Act. We interacted with members of the National uh, State House of Assembly. We studied the National Health Act, how we'll be able to operate it in Gombe State specifically. So we're able to work on it. We developed our own structure. Now it's in the Minister of Justice. Before the subject of finally goes, we'll try to institute a mechanism of strategic exit plan so that we will not create a gap. We are going to do that so that we take complete ownership of this program and sustain it. May God bless Save the Children because without Save the Children, we wouldn't have been where we are now. You can see it. We have just registered our WDC with the state government. And this shows that we are not stopping if Save the Children is gone. We are determined to continue. So what I'm trying to do now is to make sure that all these things they brought to my table, the policies we adopted in trying to address this issue, I now make them sustainable. So I'm talking of sustainability. I'm not only saying bring in the support, no. Bring in the support, I look at it at the State Council on Health and then try to work out with the development, Department of Planning, uh, Planning Research and Statistics to see how we are going to make these programs sustainable. Once they bring in a policy, we are translating the policy from policy table to implementation, and the implementation down to the clinic where the beneficiaries will now enjoy it and then we sustain the temple. That's what we are now doing. This is the time we can say we need the services of Save the Children, the development partners more than ever before when we have other challenges surrounding uh, issues of security. The most vulnerable are the women and children. So they need more care than, more now than before. I advise Save the Children one day, one time, if they decide to come back to the state, let them go to the non simam LGS so that we just circulate all the activities to cover the 34 LGS so that one day we just wake up that we don't have any child uh, with severe acute malnutrition in Kazana State. My prayer here is if there's any, any avenue that can make Save the Children International uh, have another way in the state, we'll be happy and we will appreciate that. We would have wanted a stronger collaboration while we are developing strategies for advocacy, uh, when we are prioritizing what actually the state requires in terms of moving one program or the other forward. So maybe these are things that would have been done probably better if we have another chance to do this engagement again. This project has achieved a lot of things for the last three years, but it would never have been possible without the support and participation of uh, CSOs, the government, and a number of stakeholders who, have, who were involved in this project. So our partners actually had played a great role in the achievements we have made during the course of the last three years. So I really want to say thank you for all those involved and especially now uh, at the time where we are trying to start a new phase of project for the next three years, focusing on Kaduna and nutrition in intervention. I would like to call upon all partners to be with us like they did in the last three years so that we can uh, also achieve a lot and lift up children from poverty.